Hey guys, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to go off the previous video with the Flatpak series and we're going to talk about making our messengers more anonymous and secure. We're going to first look for our communication application as a Flatpak, taking advantage of the benefits of bubble wrap. This video is going out first to those who are monthly member supporters. Really appreciate you guys for supporting this. If anyone is interested in supporting this, they can go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. It's a completely public blog, despite the domain name. It just happens to be where I host the blog. It's easy to manage all in one place. I actually have direct messaging with everyone there. So it's a really convenient place for me to host everything. So if you're interested, check out the blog there, buymeacoffee.com slash politictech slash posts. Have everything organized. You have categories here. You can look at each post in its category. And you can also search by title. So for me, it's the perfect place to put this blog and it offer other ways people can support if they're interested and if you want to support and do it for absolutely free just simply repost these videos and posts and that would be a really big help to helping this grow so let's get started with our tutorial and we'll go ahead there's also other anonymous ways like Monero to support as well by the way it listed on that site but let's get to the tutorial First, we're going to go to flathub.org. We're going to search for our application of choice for messaging. So maybe we'll go for, you know, session messenger, a lot of people like that. We could go for Gajim. I'm really not sure how to pronounce that. I probably should have looked that up first. But we're just going to roll with it today. Go and look up Tox. That's another interesting encrypted messenger this one's peer-to-peer -peer, but we can still take advantage of torification to make it more anonymous thing to realize about peer-to-peer -peer messengers is of course if you're not torifying everything your IP address will be shared with the person you're communicating with so that's why we want to utilize torification here we also want to utilize flat packs and if you didn't see my previous video on flat packs in isolation do check that out so you can better understand all the benefits. I've already installed it, but I'm going to show you again how it's installed. You just simply click on what you're interested. Scroll down to the bottom. It'll tell you the command. You just simply execute this and you'll have it installed. And at that point, it'll come on flat seal, the application that I had covered in the previous video. So let's take a quick look at that and see what's installed. So right now we have a few different encrypted messengers here. We also may decide we want to go through the process of installing session as a flat pack. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see the command there, I will copy and paste these commands into the blog. So if you want something to follow with copy and paste instructions, simply go to the blog post and we're going to go Y to continue with this installation. We'll go ahead and do that. Now, what's great about flat packs, as I mentioned, is it utilizes things like bubble wrap to isolate different parts of the system from the application unlike normal Linux applications where an application that could be exploited could get access to sensitive files like your MAC address file your permanent MAC address file in your sys class device folders so keep that part in mind that it's important to use isolation in that it will prevent exploitation and security vulnerabilities from going through those applications, especially if you're more restrictive with it. If it doesn't need the network, as I mentioned last time, disable the network. If it doesn't need the network, you can simply go to flat seal application and disable it if you don't need it. Of course, this is an encrypted messenger, so of course it needs the internet. So let's go ahead and close this out. And since it's installed session, now, after you install an application, it'll show up, but you'll have to reopen Flat Seal after installing it to have it show up. So as you can see, session is now loaded. Great default restrictions. You really don't have to mess with this much. You could experiment. You could try restricting certain things, then try and reopen the application, see if it functions normally. If it does function normally, go ahead and keep that restriction. But keep in mind, too much restriction can prevent the application from working correctly. Now let's go ahead to our next step. Now that we have our applications as flat packs, we can then go to our desktop shortcut 
And of course, at first, we're not even going to have a session shortcut on the desktop. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Go to your little menu, go look up the application. So we see session is not on the desktop. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click it. We're going to go add to desktop. At that point, we have session on the desktop. We can then right click on that. We can check out the properties and see what exactly the launcher has. And so you can see the command to launch the application is right here. You know, of course, Session in particular already has Loki Nets onion routing. go and do Dino here we can simply change our launcher which is already set up here with proxy chains Dino and we can also add different types of for example Dino itself is not a flat pack What it does is it's going to allow you to see it attempting to make those Torified connections to start the application. And this can be helpful to see if you're having any problems with your connection. We have our proxy chains run in terminal. Let's go ahead, since I already have the Dino one set up, let's go ahead and take a quick look at how it works in the terminal. So we'll close this. And so Dino is also running, but as you can see here, we have the proxy chains, the strict chain with the local host port 9050 TCP using jabberfr.org. And so it's connecting through this particular proxy, which happens to be the Tor client itself. And you don't have to understand all of this. My basis for this video is to show you how to make encrypted and anonymous messengers. What's interesting about Tox is it uses encryption library. It has been audited by uh, Matthew Green at Johns Hopkins. He teaches cryptography there. It's as easy as that. You can get started with private, anonymous, and encrypted messaging with simply installing a flat pack, taking a look at the restrictions, utilizing flat seal to manage those restrictions. Usually, the defaults are just fine and highly restrictive for things that are set up as flat packs because they already have the rules inside by default. And ensure first that you start the Tor client, pop OS or Debian. You can do apt install Tor, and that will install the Tor client for you. Don't forget to start it, system control, start Tor. And to have it start every boot so you don't have to ever start it again, go ahead and do system control, enable Tor. That's our tutorial for today. Don't forget to check out the blog and I have several tutorials content early to those who are supporting there. So thank you for watching. Check out the blog buymeacoffee.com slash politictech slash posts and I'll be back with more on how to protect your privacy.